Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about pemigatinib, a medication that was approved by the FDA for the treatment of cholangiocarcinoma in 2020. Fibroblast growth factor receptors, FGFRs, are membrane proteins that contain an extracellular region, a single transmembrane span, and an intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. The extracellular part of the receptor is composed of three immunoglobulin-like domains, where the ligand binds. The initiation of the FGFR signaling pathways requires the binding of its natural ligand, fibroblast growth factor, FGF. FGF binding induces conformational changes within the receptor, causing receptor dimerization and autophosphorylation of the tyrosine residue in the intracellular tyrosine kinase domain. Activation of the tyrosine kinase leads then to the recruitment of many intracellular docking proteins. These interactions facilitate a downstream cascade of intracellular signaling pathways that ultimately promote cell growth differentiation and survival. The aberrant and dysregulated activity of FGF receptors due to genetic alterations is observed in various tumors, supporting the proliferation and survival of malignant cells. Therefore, FGFRs are deemed to be potential therapeutic targets for anti-cancer drug treatment. In a previous video, I talk about the discovery of futivatinib, which is a selective irreversible inhibitor of FGFR 1, 2, 3, and 4. It binds to the FGFR kinase domain by forming a covalent bond with a cysteine residue in the ATP binding pocket. Upon binding to FGFR, futivatinib blocks phosphorylation and subsequent downstream signaling pathways. Pemigatinib is also a small molecule kinase inhibitor with anti-tumor activity. It works by inhibiting fibroblast growth factor receptors, and it displays potent inhibition of FGFR1, 2, and 3. In contrast to futivatinib, which is an irreversible inhibitor, pemigatinib works by competitive antagonism with a half-maximal inhibitory activity at the low nanomolar range. The synthesis of the molecule was accomplished through a series of reactions including a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction with the corresponding aryl chloride, formation of the urea with ethyl isocyanate, and a reductive amination with the aldehyde. Another reductive amination reaction took place with an aldehyde generated by the formulation reaction of this intermediate, which was obtained from commercial pyrolopyridine upon chlorination and a directed orthometallation reaction to install this carbonyl group. The synthesis begins with the N oxidation of pyrrolopyridine followed by treatment with methyl chloride in warm DMF to give 4 chloroazaindole, which is also commercially available. The next step consists of a directed orthometallation reaction. To this end, protection of the N1 position with tips strategically allows for subsequent lithiation directed by the chlorine atom. Upon quenching with dimethylformamide and an aqueous acid workup, the unprotected aldehyde is obtained in excellent yield. Next, sulfonylation of the nitrogen and acetal protection of the aldehyde allows for another directed orthometallation reaction, this time at the more activated C2 position of the azaindole ring. Now, the metallation is guided by the sulfonyl group, which is an excellent directing group that increases the rate of hydrogen metal exchange and stabilizes the metallated intermediate. Lithiation of the azaindole with LD8 and quenching with this formamide provides an aldehyde that undergoes reductive amination with morpholine in the presence of sodium triacid oxyborohydride in good yield. Acidic removal of the acetal protecting group exposes the aldehyde which undergoes reductive amination with the aniline to give the corresponding benzylamine. The aniline was prepared from methyl 35 dimethoxybenzoate in three steps, including a fluorination reaction, saponification of the ester, and a courteous rearrangement. 
The Courtier rearrangement is the thermal decomposition of acyl acids to the corresponding isocyanates. The conversion of the carboxylic acid to the corresponding acyl acid can be accomplished by the reaction with DPPA. The acyl acid rearranges then to the corresponding isocyanate. The isocyanate is then hydrolyzed to give a primary amine or undergo nucleophilic attack with alcohol such as terbutanol to give the corresponding carbamate, like this bog protected amine. Reaction with ethyl isocyanate gives the urea. Exposing the urea to LHMDS derives in an intermolecular cyclization reaction. Finally, basic hydrolysis removes the phenyl sulfonyl protecting group to deliver pemigatinib. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like, or leave me a comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.